let's uh, go to Python and just define some set. Let's say A is a set. Uh, let's say um, one, two, three, uh, maybe eight. Let's say this is set A. Let's define set B, for example, uh, maybe three, four, um, uh, maybe this. And uh, what you can do next is you can, for example, check a membership relationship. Uh, for example, if you want to set one in A, uh, print that out. If you want to print that, if you want to check whether a particular element is in A or not. So here we want to print, uh, the, the, the print will become true if one is in A, otherwise it will become false. So in this particular case, yes, one is an element of A. Uh, however, if you just write, for example, uh, four in A, you will get false. Yeah. So basically, this uh, four, this four in A, that is basically a variable. Uh, you can call it a flag. The value of this, that's a Boolean variable. Uh, the type of this variable is uh, Boolean. Uh, it has only two values, true or false. So you can check the membership of uh, this with that. Further, you can check whether one set is subset of the other or not. So for example, um, you can, for example, define a set. Let's say you have a set B already. Uh, you may want to check whether B is subset of A or not. So there is a function that is available. Uh, so B is um, subset of A. Uh, it will return true. The value will be true if B is the subset. Otherwise, the value will be false. So here, uh, false because uh, B is not a subset of A. Uh, B contains a value four, which is no longer in, in A. So, so this four does not belong to A. Uh, so B does not have all the elements that are drawn from A. B has some elements that are not in A. Hence, B is not subset of A. Um, just for fun, why don't we write our own function? Now, now this is subset function is available. Why don't we write this function by ourselves? So let's write a function. The function name might be um, check. Um, so let me F is subset. Let's write this function as this way. Um, and not only that, we, we pass the two sets here, A and B, and we want to check whether A is subset of B or not. So let's say that's the function that we really want to write. So basically we want to write to tell, check whether the first set is subset of the second set or not. So yeah, that's the, this is something that we really want to write on our own. So what can we do in this function, for example, um, we can, we can, because we want to check whether all the elements of A, they are present in B, we will loop over the element of A. So for um, element E in A, for element E in A, check if um, E in A, A in B, pass um, else, return false um, that's it um, so for example it will go over every element of a and will check whether that element is in b or not if that element is in b it will continue and if there is a single element that is not in b if there is a single element of a that is not in b which means you will go in return you will go in this statement and you will get a return and then you will return false if the loop completes, for example, uh, then you just write true because in that case, um, everything is okay. So that is our own function, uh, finding subset. By the way, uh, by the way, if you're if you're not comfortable with with Python, we have a full-fledged course on Python for beginners from scratch. We have um, we have actually introduced Python at a very beginner level to a little bit advanced level in our separate course. So I will suggest if you're not comfortable with Python, uh, 
you, you should enroll that course as well because uh, in this particular course we'll use Python heavily. So yeah, so let's, let's do that. And uh, now let's see whether a particular, um, so let's print F is subset. So let's say we want to check whether, sub, whether B is subset of A or not. So the return is false. B is not a subset of A. Uh, if, for example, we print uh, just F is subset, our own function, and we check whether this particular 2, 3, 4, whether this is a subset of this particular set or not, which contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, now the return value should be true. Let's check. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, that's true. Actually, um, actually, this is subset function that you have seen earlier. Uh, that is uh, that is also available built-in function. But that's how you can implement the function if you really want yourself. Um, okay. Uh, here is uh, here is uh, a Python question for you. Um, which 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 might be a fun practice. Write a function uh, that um, takes a set and prints all its subsets. So basically, uh, or or write a function that actually takes a set and returns a power set, and then you just print the power set. Um, yeah, do it. Um, it will be a fun exercise. Okay, next we do um, some practice in Python. Um, of, of the operations that we did um, for sets, for example, union, intersection, difference, complements, and all that stuff. So let's go to Jupyter Notebook and uh, do, some, do some practice. Uh, what are the functions that are available uh, for these set kind of data structures? So for that, maybe we need a NumPy package. So let's import that, SNP. And uh, let's have a universal set. Let me call that set as omega or uh, universal set maybe. Let's call that omega, omg, omega. Um, let me call the set command on that and np.arrange. This arrange function actually uh, returns, for example, this arrange function returns uh, uh, the numbers from 0 to 9, including 9, not 10. And then this set command will generate those that numpy array as um, as a set. So, for example, if we now see type of omg, that will be a set rather than a numpy array. So uh, we can we can just display that. That's a set of these nine numbers. Let's say that's our universe. Let's say that's a universal set. Let's define a set A to be um, to be let's say set let's say np dot range start from let's say zero and at nine and pick every other element let's say that's our a if you see a let's say this is a um, and maybe let's define b for example as a set uh, np dot range just to take an example np dot range uh, start from one uh, go to nine and pick for example every third element so this B is, uh, this This is B, this is A. Now if you see the union of A and B, and we call union function, A union B, and the result will be this. You can see uh, uh, A contains 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and B contains 1, 4, 7, and uh, here we have A union B, which is both the elements of A as well as the elements of B, um, but this duplicate element, this four, is appearing on both of the sets, and that is just represented once. Further, we can take the intersection a dot intersection uh, a dot intersection b, and this will result just the common elements of a and b. And here, the common elements of a and b are are just four. If there are more more than one common elements, for example, if we just uh, add with b b dot add let's say another element let's say um, we add 6 to b as well now if you see b b has these elements 1 4 6 and 7 a has elements 0 2 4 6 
if we now take the intersection we will be noticing four and six both uh, so let's see a dot intersection a dot intersection b um, yeah so that is four and six um, uh, other than intersection there is a difference function as well again let me display a that is a let me display b that is b um, a uh, dot difference will give me the difference of a and b so a minus b the result will be a minus b all the elements of a that are not in b so 0 is not in b 2 is not in b 4 is uh, sorry 8 is not in b the rest of the elements of a they are in b so they are discarded um, similarly once you have defined this uh, um, universal uh, function universal set omg you can compute the complement of a so a complement for example complement a complement is simply um, universal set dot difference um, a that is a complement and here you can see a complement uh, a complement as all the elements that are there in the universal set but they are not in a similarly you can define b complement the same way i'm just going to prove the de morgan's law for you b complement is just that that is b and this is b complement so this is b complement so here is the de morgan's law for example um, de morgan's law say that a dot union a dot union b and then you take the complement of that i mean this thing this is uh, a union b that's a set then you take the complement of that which is omg dot um, difference so yeah that's the difference so first you take a union b and then you take the difference of a union b from the universal set that is a union b whole complement and this result this result will be the same as if you take the intersection of a complement and b complement let's see a complement dot intersection b complement yeah so the result is exactly the same and that is one um, that is one uh, de morgan law the other de morgan law is the other way around you 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 write an intersection here and you write a union here and you're done so let me let me prove the other way around as well so if you just write the intersection here intersection uh, that's the uh, that's one side or you can call it the left hand side the right hand side might be this with this intersection removed with union and you can see both are exactly correct I mean um, this is not a, this is not a complete mathematical proof I'm just showing you what de Morgan's law says yeah so further um, you can also check whether the two sets are just disjoint or not. There is a is disjoint function. Uh, there is a is subset function you have already seen. There is a function called is superset. You are, uh, I mean, whether a particular set is a superset of other set or not. There are a lot of uh, functions and support available in this sets data structure um, in, in, in Python. So it is good to explore that.